Now, if they have them in the UK, it. I'm guessing well, and we have them. Yeah. 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 So we find that it works well. Yeah, we have them here. We have T-Mobile has one here in the States. Yeah. And it works pretty and you good. you get them in Seoul where I used to get yeah. mine. But so. they might have them there. So look into that. Mm-hmm. Pocket Just, mobile Wi-Fi hotspot. Yeah. I'll have a look. I'll have a look into that. Yeah. That might be an answer. Thank you for that. Well, it's good because when you do a live event, especially for you, because you do car shows where we don't, we just do people. So as long as, you know. No, I mean, like, just, because sometimes it's quite nice. It's like when you when you turn up at, say, like, you know, um, the, the concourse of elegance at Hampton Court, and, right. you know, you just do a walk around. And then yeah. people, because mm-hmm. people who can't attend would be like, oh, my. And it, and it feels like very first person-y kind of thing, right. doesn't it? Because you're literally walking around going, here I am, mm-hmm. you know. So, I, I mean, like I said, when I've done them in Dubai back in the day, they used to work quite well. But over right. here, it's just the connectivity. And always at these events, there's so many people logging on. Yes. That, that, that's the other problem. Yeah. You know? So it's crazy. People, people log on and they can't watch them call. They can't get out of their own way. So to Vicky's mm-hmm. point, if you have your own little Wi-Fi hotspot, yeah. then you're the superstar. And then yeah. I watch your stuff sometimes on Instagram when you go live. I yeah, watch. Instagram seems to work better sometimes for me live. Yeah. yeah. So I have done I, that. What I tend to do is if I have an electric car and I have to stop and charge it, Right. It's so boring. I just go live. <laughs> yes, like, I am, I'm driving electric. I'm going to be here for seven hours. Yeah, basically. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and those, are, those have done really well because I've just gone live and I've just said, look, so I'm on 10% now. So until yeah. I get 80%, I'm going to be here with you. And that's, you know, yeah. and it just looks like that, you know, so yep. they, they, do, they do quite well. Anyway, how's everybody doing? Good. You know, we're recording. We haven't really started the show. We're just letting the fans okay. get the inside thing of what's going on, how we do our so shows. This is, this is the pre-show show. The pre-show, and can I tell you, the pre-show shows, people seem to love, we get comments on that. Like, we love that. Before, it's like, really? You love seeing that we have no clue of what we're doing? Good for you. It makes you human. Makes you it, it makes you, everyone's good. <laughs> Vicky's going to leave us in October for Korea. She's going to Love Island. We can Again? talk about that. Yeah. Oh, right. So, man, what's it called? Juju Island? Jeju. 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 She's going to Jeju. Jeju. Yeah, she just she wants just a Korean Jew. That's all. Looking for a husband. Ooh. And uh, so she's going to go I think there. that's a thing. Does anyone want a chocolate biscuit? Oh, that looks oh, good. Now oh. no, it, it, he's a dunker. He's a dunker. He's a dunker. On that point. This is 2OF Entertainment. Hey, here we are, no, technically should, on the show. <laughs> it should read, it should read, buckle up and buckle up and dunk your biscuit. I, 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 will, I was just going to say that intro with me and the alien in the car. Yeah. With the Star Trek background now, which is so brilliant. It just gets better every time. But I should have I should have sent you this one to update it. Oh, I saw that one yeah, on Instagram. Yeah, saw that. yeah, yeah. Yeah, might be slightly, slightly copyrighted. So uh, probably, yeah, probably, yeah. You have to yeah. be really clever with uh, Chat GTP to get it to do that. Because if you say Star yeah. Trek, you won't do it. Because yeah. it's like oh. I can't do that. It's Star Trek. So okay. then you say, "I want to be the captain of a starship." I'm oh. going boldly, and it goes, "Oh, okay." And then it kind of interprets that, you know. But yesterday, yesterday but, was, was it yesterday. Yesterday was. Are you, are you making a fortune out of that bit? Out of that because those those, those slimming. That green slimming top you have on. I mean, you already lost like a like two stone just wearing it. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. That's the, is that the new that's you? That's why I feel like I can have this chocolate biscuit now. I don't. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. well, you, it's like... They look suspiciously like bourbons to me. <laughs> uh, I don't know. They're copycats. What are they? Copycats. Yeah. Look. There's, there's, there, there you go. Here you go, everybody. We're, we're paid out uh, unpaid uh, advertising. Your free publicity you for uh, whoever that is. Oh, very nice. I think, I think it's a supermarket owned brand. So there you go. There you go. Made by well, somebody. Hey, before we start, we're like officially start because we have no idea what we're going to talk about today. The painting behind you, what is Formula One? Williams, is it? I thought it was a Williams when I first saw it. It is. Is that a Formula One? There you go. Yeah, Look at a, that. Two, it's a 2002 uh, Renault Formula One car. Nice. Which I had the privilege of driving. Very so that's nice. just me. Hang on, that's actually me in there. Uh, and I drove that in, I think it was 2007, I drove that car. Very nice. Yeah, Paul Ricard circuit in France. 
So it was part of a Renault Philip program. They called it the Philip program that they did for journalists and, and, and people, privileged people like us, where they want to give you an experience of driving an actual F1 car. Right. So that's an actual F1 car. It's been detuned a little bit so that we don't right. kill ourselves, but it is an actual F1 car. And um, I did that. Is that with possible now with the chocolate biscuits or is it? Uh... You know, it's interesting because when you get there, if we can sort of, so we just talk about this for a bit. So when we, when, I, when we got there, a whole bunch of journalists, they don't just put you into the F1 car. What they do is they actually put you through a series of exercises. They do some medical checks on you and stuff like that. And then they build you up to that car. So first of all, you get to go around in Renault Clios, you know, yeah. touring cars, racing cars. And then you go into single seaters. And then you get some training and coaching. And then eventually at the end of the day, I think you get two or was it three laps? You go, that's all you get in that. Yeah. That's, and that's at the end of the day. Once they think that you, you are possibly not only safe enough to drive it, but safe enough to survive it. As well, because right. so, people, so. people don't realize the G forces. Mm. We did a we did a three day F one thing where you got to do that, but just like the half a day in one. Um, and the first day, other than you know, I felt like I I should be dating the doctor when he got done checking us. Um, they he was like they literally go over the safety rules and and what he said is you go you drive a, you know, like a go kart to a car to and then you finally get to do it. And what they don't tell you and the reason that they do all these checks is that the g-forces when you drive that car not the other cars like you know there's a little bit of g but you don't feel it because there's g-forces in your car but in that car when you do a turn and you do whatever you feel like you're done when you're done you felt like you just went 12 rounds with mike tyson you're done for you're done so you're absolutely right but i i would be flattering my complete incompetence behind the wheel to, to claim that I felt anything like that. The okay. is, you turn up on the day, all, all motoring journalists and we're all bravado and like, you know, we're going to give it the beans and we're going to hit the 20,000 RPM and all of this. <laughs> you know, I kid you not, when when I did my lap, they give you the telemetry afterwards and we're all sitting together in, in the briefing, right. the debriefing room and they give you the printouts because, you know, they can't, they can't lie. They see exactly what you're doing. And right. I looked at mine and I thought, you know, I think I reckon I've done fifteen thousand RPM today, yeah. and it was eight thousand RPM. That's as high as I got. You know? But the trouble with these things is the grip on these cars is aerodynamic grip. Right. You know, there's a level of mechanical grip, but above that, it's aerodynamic grip. And uh, so, to in order to experience those really high G forces that you're talking about, which you're, you're absolutely right, you have to be going some, because the aerodynamic grip doesn't work until you're above a certain speed. You know, right. n n otherwise it doesn't do anything. So you have to be really going some. And, the, and you, you either need really large testicles or really mm -hmm. large levels of skill to be able to do that. And I had neither. So, <laughs> so I never really got to those sort of speeds. But having said that, the, the experience that you talk about. So after you've done that, so not before, right. interestingly, but after you've done that, they have a two-seater Formula One type car. Okay. And then what they do is they put you in with a professional driver. They strap okay. you in behind him. It's very cozy. You could almost be hugging him. It's very intimate. And they strap you into this thing. And then he takes you around. And oh, my God. It, it, puts, it puts everything into context. Now, here, just as a simple illustration, I didn't realize at the time. When I got home the next day, I got out of the shower. You know, I was back home in Dubai. I got out of the shower. And my wife was like, what's that? I'm like, what are you talking about? What's that? I looked down. The bell straps have left red marks. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally had been imprinted. They stayed there for about a week. Because that's the G forces that you talk about. Yeah. The belts were holding me in so tight that that's what they had done. So it, it, it's it's mind boggling. It's absolutely, you know, when you watch an F1 race and you're sitting there with your beer or your beverage and you're laughing at these 22 guys jockeying for position on the track and you go, look at that plonker. Can't you see yeah. him? Can't he? Yeah. You know, and when you do no. it, Oh my God! You can't see them. That's the damn thing because mm -hmm. this is all you can actually see. So how and you cope with twenty-two other races, I don't know. Secondly, to be able to do that at that speed under those G forces, you've yeah. got to be superhuman. And nowadays, it wasn't even so much the case with this one. But if you look at the steering wheel, a steering wheel on a Formula One car costs about thirty to fifty thousand dollars. You look at all the buttons and everything, and they're doing all of these adjustments yeah. as they're doing that as they're racing wheel to wheel. Yeah. As they're doing those five G forces through the corners, on top of that, they're getting instructions in their head and they're adjusting the car on the go. It's just, I mean, they are superhuman. They they simply are. There's no other way to put it. Well, F1 TV, I know I think BBC may have it, but F1 TV, which I, I get the F1 thing so I can watch it and because I'm I love F1, but you can go with 
a certain driver or a certain camera view and like you could see what they're seeing and to your point sometimes i'll go oh let me just see what the driver's seeing first of all it's like you know when they it's really cute when they show it like on the sky oh look there's the grandstand like the driver doesn't see no it's a blur like if you're in the if you're looking at what the drivers look it's a blur that's the first thing the other thing is to your point when someone says well why didn't they see the car you don't see anything like no, when they're no. turning and they're like about to bump when they realize they're about to bump into each other is like that's when oh oh yeah he's right there you know what no. so it is it is it is wild and to see it in person is wild but when you on f1 tv when you push all the little buttons it's just awesome to watch it so i, I get a kick out of it now they've got the new tilt camera so during yeah. the race when the car's on a tilt yeah the camera tilts with it and you get the real that, feel of what's going on at Sandford yeah. when they were they were testing yeah. that here yeah. so what they yeah, use yeah. on the yachts the cams are extraordinary because of course yes. not, not, with this car we didn't have that but now they've got right. the halo system so the halo yep. system literally yeah. like goes first of all you're clamped in because now they have neck braces again we didn't have it at that time they got yeah. so you can't move your head and then you've got a halo system that goes around like that and then there's a bar that comes down so yeah. like so literally there is a there's three bars that are also blocking your vision on top of that so you then you but I wonder, I wonder, I uh, wonder, uh, if they actually see the middle bar after a while. I well, think I guess, I guess you probably you must just, might. yeah, you just focus out of it. I think, I think you're, it's, you know, it's like, um, fighter pilots, right? When they have all yeah. those holographic displays and they're flying these jets and stuff like that. I mean, you know, for us to sit in that situation, you, you know, we'd have a mental breakdown. But they become so used to it and so acclimatized to it that they don't see it like that anymore. They can see through those displays. And I think it's the same with Formula One drivers, and they'll just see through the bar. We will see it when we see the helmet cam. They'll be like, How are they seeing anything? But they 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 probably can't, they just probably have tuned it out. You know, so yeah. it, it's quite extraordinary what they can do. There's another little story. Have you got time? So I'll tell you about this uh, F1 experience. It's your show. We have all the time in the world. <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> We always tell you, like, you know, you're not here to, you're not going to get a Formula One drive. You're not going to get a seat. Oh, yeah. Don't try and impress us. You know, blah, 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 blah. You're just here to experience it. And then after the event, we were sitting at dinner and they told us about this one guy. So one of the events that they did, and they had this one guy came over and they never named him. Um, but uh, from the beginning of the day, they put him into the Renault Clio and he was quick. Yeah. They were like, oh, this, this guy, he must be a racer. He's quick. And then yeah. they put him into the single seater and he was quick. And they were like, wow. And then they just started taking bets amongst themselves. They're like, well, what lap time is he going to do in the F1 car? Because this guy clearly has got some skill and he's got some pace, you know? Yeah. So he goes, he goes through the day and then they all go through the other people. And then finally they put him in the F1 car and they send him out. And he goes out and then they all, they jump to the, 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 the pit wall and they got their stopwatches and they're like, oh, wow. You know, I wonder how quick this guy's going to be, you know? And they come and they're waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting. <laughs> Where is this guy? This shit, he must have crashed or something, you know. And eventually they hear the car come around the final corner, and there it is, and it's going. <laughs> they're like, oh man, there's something wrong with that car. You know, and eventually he does his three laps. He does completes the three laps and he comes into the pits. Immediately they jump on, they plug the computers in, they're like, Oh, what's wrong with the car? What's wrong with the car? And the guy's like, Nothing, nothing's wrong with the car. They're like, yeah. Why why were you going so slowly? And he said, when am I ever going to get another chance to drive a real Formula One car? I wanted the experience go. to last as long as possible. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. They, were, they should have let him go one more time, though, balls out, just to see what would have happened. Well, well this is the yeah. thing. I can't remember if it was two laps or three laps, but I remember like we were all complaining. It's like, why do we get so little time with the car? And they're like, right. well, that's because if we, let, if we let you do any more, your confidence increases, and then you crash. Ah. Gotcha. <laughs> That's an expensive yeah. car to crash. Yeah, so, the, so they're like, yeah. this is what and you've the, learned. The, the, the twin seekers, that was the old Minardi you were in, I take it. Uh, no, it was I, it was a custom car by these guys because it was part of the Renault okay. Freedom program. Okay. So, yeah, they, they have it when you go to the school. It was an extended chassis of an existing mm -hmm. Formula 1 car that they probably butchered and done that. Uh, I mean, again, it wasn't like full-level Formula 1, but it was it was pretty much there as yeah. you know, so. Um, and, and uh, you know, like it, the idea was there to give you a real experience with a real driver of what it could actually be like, but sh shocking, absolutely shocking. Things like that so tell you, when you look at those experiences, you go, yeah, those dreams I had as a kid of being a racing driver? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I got my car up to 80 the other day. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, add, add, a, add a one in front of that. And that's yeah. like, that doing that, like on the, on the turn, I love especially on f1 tv it shows you sometimes how fast they're going like they do miles and kilometers and i'll get a kick out of it because they're taking a turn at like 125 miles an hour and i'm like yeah. oh that's nice and then they go down a straightaway at like 203 
I'm thinking to myself, yeah. yeah, that's good. I'm good with that. Like when I know when I did my little drive, I, I think my, my best was like a hundred and something, but that yeah. was like out of a straightaway. I was like, yeah, yeah, no, no, we're good. We're good. No, no, no. I can make it, but it's no, still the G no. forces was there. No, so so I, I, had to do, I, I don't know if I should admit this on, on record, but I, I, I had to do at least once in my life, the, you know, the 200 yeah. miles per hour, the golden 200 okay. miles. All right. So I had a Lamborghini Gallardo Performante one time in uh, no Superleggera in Dubai, and there is a road there that I knew of that I was like, okay, I could probably do it there. And I know that right. it's quiet. The only thing that you could worry about is camels. They're straying across the road. <laughs> Other than that, it'll be pretty quiet. But it doesn't. Yeah, everybody have to worry about that. So. Yeah, there's always thing. something that gives you the hump, isn't it? Seriously, I'm pretty. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Very good. Well done. But, uh, but yeah, so aside from getting the hump, I was like, okay, let me do this once. You know. And um, it's extraordinary how things change at that sort it of It slows thing. down. It slows it, down. Seriously, because yeah. it, it, it slows down. But at the same time, this long, what I knew to be a long, straight, flat road suddenly yeah. became a long, straight, bouncy road. Like all of a sudden you could oh, see wow. the undulations because everything kind of contracted. It slowed right. down and it kind of contracted at the same time. So yeah. all of a sudden you became aware of every single dip and every single bump and, and, and every little stone or every little wisp of dust that was coming across the road. You suddenly, like, you're, you're, you're fo you were sort of hyper-focused on this thing, you know. And I just waited and I just wanted to get up to my, so what is it in kilometers? about 325 miles per hour. So right. I think I, I, got it, I got it up to 328 and I was like, done, done, that's it, that's it, cut, cut, cut. <laughs> Slow down before I kill myself, you know. So that was that it. That was but back I, before the... Yeah. Dubai had cities. Now they have cities. Like there's not that many roads. I don't think anymore where you can. I'm sure there are still, well, but there's no, not that I mean, many roads where I, you can go. Well, that road, that road now you can't do it on because they put cameras yeah. on it. So back in the ah. day when I was that, I mean, this is a few years back. So at that time, you know, you could you could get away with it. But yeah, there's yeah, but, there's a lot more cameras and stuff now. So it's, it's my kinda, my friend who lives there. Every time I go, they go. Remember, don't do more than 20 kilometers over the speed limit yeah. because then you'll get a ticket and I have to pay for it. So yeah. like if the if the kilometer is eighty, he says you can go go ninety nine. If yeah. whatever he says, just add nineteen, not twenty. Yeah. I'm like, got it. And he said, so they just send you a ticket for anything over twenty, yeah. and you never see a police officer there except if there's an accident. Yeah. And all of a sudden, there's an accident, and forty seven thousand drones magically appear. They right. assess the situation, and if somebody's hurt, then the police and an ambulance. Show. If nobody's yeah. hurt, the drone literally does it all. It's like, hey, take yeah. it. Okay, we're good. Bye bye. And that, it's just wild the way they have it there. But yeah, I know the road's road. going into some of the deserts yeah. when we were there. And my they're like, yeah, there's I'm like, we could we could go fast here. He's like, no, 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 no. And like to your point, it's all over now. I'm like, but there's yeah. no one here. It goes, right, it's for the stupid people. I'm like, yeah. got it. And then that was it. Because when we yeah. went there in 2000, you, as you know, yeah. there was three camels and uh, four people. Now yeah. it's a little more. So there used to be a couple of roads out of Dubai towards Babel Shams and stuff, which people used to know as a road where you could go. But yeah, since 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 I've been back, I've heard that there's a lot more cameras that they put everywhere. So, and even I, I've heard that the desert, because you could off road anywhere, you could right. literally go a half forty five minutes out of town and just turn off. Just like I fancy yeah. going that way. You go an off roader, off you go. Uh, apparently, right. even that's now they've sort of started fencing areas off and stuff. So it's not so they're really? like designated areas where you can do it, but. Yeah, so you know, the times change, things change, right? So I guess we were well, lucky we didn't, we didn't when we could. You used to be able to, yeah. when I first moved to Europe in the 80s, I mean, we'd go to Germany and and to seriously blast the cars on the, on the Autobahn, but you can't. Uh, it's too busy now on the Autobahn really? to do it. And then, and then, of course, you think, yeah, you know, you actually planked right out on it, and then there's always going to be somebody who's going to overtake you. <laughs> so, the, first, the first time I was on the Autobahn, and I was going like like an idiot because I was like, oh, this is cool, right? I'm enjoying yeah. it. A police car gets behind me and he gives me high beams. And I'm like, it's the Autobahn. Why am I getting pulled over? And my yeah, buddy was like, no, he's like, idiot, move over. You're going too yeah, slow. And I'm like, really? Yeah. So I moved yeah. over and the cop looks like this. I go, hi. He's like, vroom. I was like, okay. So I, 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 was like, I didn't realize I was an idiot. Vicky, what about you? What's the fastest you've gone? Don't tell us the country so you don't get a ticket. Legally. <laughs> That, what's the fastest you've gone? Vicky's like I, 30. I've been on the <laughs> Autobahn, but I wasn't driving, so that doesn't okay. count. But there were so many, like, trucks and stuff there now. And yeah. Like, yeah. Couldn't, there's just too much. Even in that lane, there was too many trucks. I, I don't – I haven't gone very fast anywhere. <laughs> wow. I was just thinking when he was talking, it was like, you know, it's interesting. Like, the human brain is fascinating. And, and the, we've adjusted to the point now where we can even do this. But, 
our society has also gotten to the point where like, we don't have to worry about survival. I mean, obviously some places in the world you do, but overall statement, we've gotten to the point now where we can amuse ourselves by getting in these sort of vehicles and <laughs> driving around on these tracks and things as like a job. Yeah. It's fascinating to me that your society is, is at that level where it's not like, okay, I need to farm for food. I need to find water. I need to make sure I don't die from, you know, this animal killing me or whatever. You could be like, well, I'm getting in this car and I'm, right. you know, and it's strapped in and I'm going around this thing. And, you know, this is my job. And I'm, there's 20 other and guys out here doing the same job. <laughs> yeah. And people are going to pay a lot of money to watch you do it. For a, a yeah. camera, you know, paper well, you remember when, the, when, a, when steam and... engine, when when trains were introduced, when the steam engine, when locomotive was introduced, they were people were like, "Oh, humans will die. Humans right. won't be yeah. able to." You know, they were like, "Humans yeah, won't be able to stand that." Yeah. 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 The, the, yeah. the theory was that all your body organs would, uh, would yeah. you know, would turn to mush. <laughs> right. right. From the speed. From the speed. Yeah. And, and now people are flying to space stations, if you will. Not on yeah. Boeing, of yeah. course, because they leave people there. But, you know, <laughs> rocket ships that work. One way ticket, uh, people go on those. <laughs> Apparently, you have, you have, I, guess, yeah. I, I guess when you, when you book with speed. Boeing, Boeing, Boeing space, it's like, listen, this is a this is round trip. And Boeing's like, no, yeah. it's one way. Good luck. Yeah. I know they they obviously didn't read the T's and C's either, did they? Right. No, they, 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 right. they didn't read their agreement when they got on that. But it's really funny because I guess Musk or whoever is going to send the rescue ship, but they're going to be there. I, I think it was like an extra almost a year because they so have they, to yeah. do eight, this. Eight, month, eight months, they said. So they were supposed to yeah. go off February, eight, come back. and it's turned into eight, eight months now. So, yeah. And I've still seen not this back. plot. It was called Gilligan's Island, and it didn't yes, end well. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't it know how it ended. Tour, that's, that's right. <laughs> that's what this is. This he, is really he, like... he should be all right, though, the astronaut, because he's called wow. Butch. I mean, so that's, that's, you know, so he should be all right. Man, that's awesome. I mean, that's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an astronaut sort of a name. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky's Vicky's yeah, awesome. you're with us. I really yeah, wish yeah, you had right. said that right yeah, when I yeah, took yeah. a drink. Yeah. Yeah. But no, think oh, about yeah. this though. So you get in a How space. How you doing up there, Butch? Yeah, yeah right. But you, but oh, you get, but does, right. can you go up there with some girl? Isn't there two of them? Yeah, there's two yeah, of them. They've yeah. been up okay. before. So, That's the thing. They've been up yeah. before. Okay. But here's the thing though. You go up. They've been abandoned on the space station, right? I mean, is there like enough food and stuff for them for the eight months? I mean, they only I'm assuming they they stock it with those, you know, those squeegee tools that can like like a Twinkie that last forever. The issue is the extra waste. It's the extra waste, the bodily waste that they're producing. Flush into space. Yeah, inject it into space. No, it's all all it's all recycled. Yeah, you drink your pee. I know that. I mean, I saw a whole special that you drink your because it goes through a thing. Yeah. And, Does that uh, affect your lips? It says that make your lips. Yeah, you get you get blowfish lips. Puffy. Yes, yeah. Yeah, you make them puffy. Um, I, I just came back from space. That's all I know. Um, but no, but it's just a matter. Of <laughs> sure, it's like. Ah. But no, it's so. There's two of you in space. Here's the thing. I have. I have a question about this, and I can't ask oh, an astronaut gosh. because none of them will. I know none of them will ever. Oh, Butch is watching me. He's, 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 he's oh, hi, Butch. You know, he's, so, okay. he's, he's on the everything. He's on YouTube so, every day watching us, mate. I'll tell you. I'm probably so. So uh, Butch is in space with whoever he's, whatever woman astronaut he is with, right? Yeah. So if you're the only two there, and after eight months, don't you get a little lonely. They're not the only two there. They're not the only oh, okay. two there. Okay, so they have an orgy. Okay, I was just curious how that would work. You know, in astronaut space. Well, like, so they're not. They're not on their own there. I thought they were I on their own. Was, oh, okay. Well, so why'd they go up? up there's other people. It's a party. It's like a fraternity party. Yeah. Why are there other people how, there? Then? How many people well, have we got? Well, there? Like, yeah. they go to, this is his story, right? Butch. Uh, and, and, this and this and Butch. What is this? Butch. I was gonna say I was gonna be rude and say Butch and the bitch, but I'm not gonna say that. But anyway, <laughs> he, oh, he, no. I'm not gonna say that. So, oh. so he he took his keys right to yeah. the Kennedy Space Center and he put them in a bowl. And then they decided, right, you two are going to oh go God. up to the ultimate swingers party in space. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow. But, okay. you know. That's, that's what's going on. So those are the kind of experiments that are being conducted. I, I yeah. always wondered about that. I, I'm assuming at some point, though, and to I'm see, trying to be They're having a test whether or not sperm actually floats or not. The only, thing, wow. the only thing I can think of is at the end of Moonraker when uh, Roger yes. Moore is in the space <laughs> shuttle and uh, yes. he managed to tune into the live camera. What the devil what? is Bond doing? I think he's attempting re-entry, sir. <laughs> right. but, here's, but here's my question, though. At some point, at some point, 
they're really going to have to do that experiment if they haven't already, because if you're going to colonize a planet, space right? babies. Oh my God! How, but think about it. Like space no, no, but serious. But seriously, you're you're a Star Trek fan, and Vicky's a Star Wars and Star Trek and uh, Doctor Who or whatever else. But if if I'm going to put humans on a a, a tube and I'm going to send them out for whatever, um, at yeah. some point the humans I send are going to die. Well, no, they're yeah. going to die at some point. So yeah. if they die, we need to procreate. So the question is, can you procreate yeah. in space? I think that's an interesting question. No, you wouldn't have. They're probably going to clone people. people. You might not have to have sex. You'd be, you'd or the just, babies you look be, like. You'd be asleep just, anyway. They'll freeze eggs yeah. and sperm and just like freeze embryos and send them. You, you can take it with you. It's a bit like going to Iceland and you know, take take a bag of sperm up with you. And, yeah, yeah, you just take your, I'm here. your little bag of space baby <laughs> seeds and you'll scatter <laughs> yeah. them. And, yeah, that's right. Space baby seeds. <laughs> well, now, well, if well, that's not the name of this show, I don't know what is. But if but if they're born in space, what nationality are they? Space. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. No, you'd have to be the nationality of the well, ship, I would guess. Yeah, whoever, whoever sponsored the ship. Yeah, whoever, the whoever ship. Sponsored the ship. So, they're a citizen of the earth. They're a citizen of the earth. If they're, the earth, if they're the universal earth. babies, they get to, they they have their own you know own TV and, and uh, cinema company for nothing because it's cool. Oh, you know, God. they get all that for no, free. You, you would you would universal literally. Pictures. Eat there has to be an entire series now. Come on, just called Space Babies. Space I mean, Babies, <laughs> I like it. But you, you really would have to be then the nationality of the ship you're on. So if you're, it's American, Chinese, Russian, whatever, that would be your, why? your thing. But I would, why? why, why that? I don't that's know. Because that's maritime. That's maritime. That's maritime law. That's and my I'm law. Assuming it's the same as if you're shipping the ocean. Law. Yeah. Is yeah. it well, the ocean? Works, you can how it works on the ship or yeah. an airplane. Then that's how. Wow. Yeah, an American, an airplane. It's wherever you get. I think wherever you you land. If you're born in a plane and just say you're born in Lufthansa, you're a Nazi. Just as simple as that. Um, if you're well, Latin, you can't say Lufthansa, the Lufthansa bad. I'm oh, sorry about that. Um, and if you're born on like yes. Carnival Cruise Line and it's out of wherever it's out of, like, you, could, you know, St. Lucia, Disney you're St. Lucia. Yeah, you're a Disney yeah. baby, right? If you're born yeah. on a Disney trip. <laughs> so, but no, but something don't I'll you never think, do. What? You well, have sorry, a, a space ahead. baby? You're a not cruise ship. No, it's just a oh, floating petri different. dish of disease and feces, and I just want to go Love Island in Korea. That. What do you think that is? COVID. Yeah. Didn't, didn't go didn't go too well during COVID, did it? I mean, there's yeah, no. exactly. That's no. Yeah. But, 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 there's COVID on the ship. Too bad. Die on the ship. It's like what? Right. Hey, no. Don't spread it here. Don't you over here. That's it. Talking about cruise ships. What what I didn't realize, of course, is that they never switch off the engines. Yeah. Really? Uh, so mm -hmm. never ever. What about, the, what about the CO2 emissions on those things? Oh my oh, god! Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. horrendous! Because they, they're, they're pro we've got this rebe extinction rebellion people yeah. here. Who are oh, they are extinct. Well, they're just rebellious here. They're not extinct yet. Yeah. But that's the next thing. Somebody will <laughs> yeah. make them extinct. Oh, but no, they're no. now they've stopped uh, sitting in the middle of roads. They're now sitting on some um, uh, waterway uh, sluice. They call it here. Coming okay. into Amsterdam to stop the cruise ships from coming in, okay? Uh, because they, yeah, you know, these cruise ships, wherever they go, they never switch off because the immunities are on twenty four seven. So the boat oh. is always continuously chucking out uh, uh, well, crap into the yeah. air. I mean, the thing is, like those boats. I mean, I've never been on one of them, but I've, uh, they fascinate me because they are like floating cities. I mean, like everything yeah. is yeah. on them. You know, from hospitals. I saw a graphic small, for the. You know, the Titanic, they showed like the Titanic and then like the cruise ships of today, and they're like mm -hmm. four times the size of the Titanic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why? Why do you want to go from your city with a pool and a hotel and get on a. Well, it is a hotel, isn't it? It's like a hotel. hotel. A pool. Like, Turned up that way and then with a bit on the front and off you go. Go to a beach hotel. It's the same damn I mean, thing. You, know, you don't have to. On the, on the you one got hand, everything on there. Yeah. Roller coasters everything, and everything. everything on the there. Cinemas, everything. On the one hand, you've got to think it's like, well, it is a huge waste, you know, because yeah. of what they're doing. And also, like, ship, shipping actually is one of the biggest contributors to, you know, global footprint, uh, carbon The footprint biggest. The biggest. But, you know, shipping to ship goods, we need. But shipping to just right. take a bunch of people around to watch cinema on the water. Right. We, well, we do. No, 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 we need that. We need that. We need to put a whole load of old people in lots of boats <laughs> and ship them off. On the other <laughs> hand, on the other hand I, do, I am fascinated by the engineering. I am fascinated right. by how they created these things. The, the entire cities that are just floating around the, the world. I just think they're incredible. And, I, and, and the thing is, if you take that forward, then ultimately you're going to be having something like that in space, right? 
Which wasn't that right. shown yeah. on uh, Bruce Willis, Sixth Sense. Not Sixth Sense, sorry, what was it? Um, oh, the one with the girl. The girl, the one with the girl. Yeah, um, fifth element, right? Fifth element, fifth, fifth element. element. Fifth element, fifth element. There you go. Well, well, nearly there. Fifth element, there, right? element, Sixth Sense, getting there. They're all the same thing. They're all the same, isn't it? I, I, I think I've got the memory of Bruce Willis right now. Ooh, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, that. Oh, you shouldn't have said that. No, no. Too no, early, too soon, too soon. Yippee, no. yippee, 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 on all the rest of it. But, I mean, it's like, you know, they had that in... in, in, in well, maybe she can remember the end of that sentence, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for, Bruce, for Bruce, it's his yippee these days, isn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> But but I mean it was it was fascinating. I mean I loved it. I loved the whole notion of there just being a cruise liner in space. Well, about there might be a maternity right. hospital out there for all the space babies. But the space yeah. babies, yeah. why not? Really? You know, you'd have to go there <laughs> but, to but no, but one, if you, you know? if you think about it for a second, to Sherrod's point, if you take the cruise ship concept, at some point, like the fifth element, there'll be a cruise ship in space. Yeah. And yeah. if you take it to the next level, if we're going to say we want to colonize the universe, good yeah. luck with that. Because we <laughs> here at the Lizard People Conference, that's not happening. Anyway, right, um, exactly. you know, you know, we didn't get, we didn't let you go to the moon, so enough. <laughs> so anyway, um, but if that's the case, then at some point, a man and a woman. I read a book. Um, are going to get together and they're going to make a bait. I did read a book. Um, it was Sherrard's book. I'm waiting for the new one. I'm going to read there that. Um, anyway, it's, um, but he, they're going to make a baby in space and yeah. they're going to have to deliver you don't in need space. People, you won't need people for that, though, will you? There'll all be time. You'd make a baby or to, yeah, or to deliver Artificial it. wombs and stuff will be out. Uh, everything will be artificial. Yeah, but people are still going to want to have sex. Well, maybe not the generation That's coming cool. up because they're too busy living in their parents' basement. Well, they're, too, they're, 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 too, they're too woke to have sex. No, I mean, if that, James T. Kerr and uh, Riker or anything to go by, they're certainly putting it. About oh, yeah, they're going to be they're going to be boom boom a, a lot now. They're going to be they're going to be no, space no, space no, space no, space they're going to be they're going to be too worried about the fact that that they may not be nice to the person they're going to have sex with. They'll be all too woke. Yeah. What was yeah, it that yeah. movie Demolition? Was it Demolition Man with um Sandra, Sandra Bullock? Bullock and Wesley Snipes and Sylvester Bullock. Stallone? Well, they, yes. Was that the one where they have sex and the like they they were like yes. Yes. they wore the glasses like, and have sex? Like, yes. Yeah, it's all yes. done that way. That's how it'll be. Because she just says to him blatantly, like, "Oh, would you like to have sex?" And he's like, "Completely whoa." Great. Okay. You know? Yeah, she's like, "Boop." <laughs> okay, sure. You know? Well, Demolition. Exactly. Man. I think is such. You don't have to put something movie. on your head. It was so such a good movie. Might... It's so underrated because it is. So... I love that movie. No, it, it 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 caught so many things. You know, because if you think about wokeism and everything that we have today, that yeah. was covered in that movie. That was yes. all yeah. in that movie. You know, way back then yeah. they had it all. You know, you can't swear, and everybody yeah. is like yeah. zen and all. It was all in that. It was so far ahead of its time. I, I you know. Demolition Man is absolutely brilliant. I think it's 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 fantastic, and plus they've got a cool car at the end of it. So, oh, <laughs> I mean, and yeah. what car? And what car would that be? Should I, are you tell us what cool car? It was? The thing is, it's bizarre, isn't it? That he finds it underground, so he goes down into the basement cities where all the right. poor people live. It turns out that yeah, there are yeah. poor people, but they're all mm -hmm. living underground. They're yeah, all well, not, not worth talking about anyway. Yeah, it's not worth talking about, you know. Mm -hmm. And then and then that, and for some reason, somebody down there has restored this car, which he gets car. to use at the end of the movie, you know. So it's absolutely brilliant. But of course, the, the best thing about it is the car uh, and the, the ideas that they came up with and of course, Sandra Bullock. So there you go. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sandra lives right up the street. I'll tell her you said hello. Yeah, does she really? Oh my I'm goodness. Stephen, right Stephen, Stephen don't, shout to, her. Don't, don't shout, shout to her again out of the window. Please don't do that. Excuse me. <laughs> I can't do that anymore because apparently the restraining order is, yeah. is 750 meters now. So, you know, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, Sandra lives here. And we, so my neighbors are Sandra Bullock, um, wow. what's Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. Wow. Thank you very little. Uh, Elon, I'm a crazy MF. I uh, yeah. don't know what I'm saying or doing and I, someone should take care of me. Um, and then um, Joe Rogan. Those are my, uh, yeah. those are my neighbors. I think, doesn't Frodo still live here? Um, Frodo? What's a Frodo? Um, oh, Frodo. What's, his, what's his real name, Shazad? Uh, Frodo's real name. Um, oh, Sean, she, Michael, uh, the guy from um, Lord of the Rings. Yes. Oh, uh, that guy. Yeah, no, little, guy little guy, little guy. Small. Yeah, but they're all little. <laughs> yeah. I That's why he's so little. He's Sorry, I apologize. I can't remember his name. But yeah. Wow. I can't I can't played remember. Frodo. Hold on. Let's give, let's give Frodo. And I can only oh. remember Ian. Sorry, Ian McKellen. It's Gandalf. That's all I can Of course. Yeah. Oh, okay, so a lot we have Elijah Wood. Hold Elijah, on a Wood. Elijah Wood. Elijah Wood. Elijah Wood. Yeah. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. He's, he's, grown up, he's grown up now. He's called Elijah Forrest. 
<laughs> oh, very good. Oh, very my good. God. You are firing all cylinders today. Well uh, done. Thank you very much. No, he's in you America, so it's Eliza Woods. Oh, dear. Oh, wow, really? <laughs> but wait a minute. So if Eli here's the problem. I would bump into him, and I could bump into any of these people. I don't even know what really they look yeah, like. Over the top of him. You wouldn't bump into him, Steve. Well, I know. I stuck on top of him. I'd feel bad. I'd feel like I'm in Japan. <laughs> I'm like Godzilla. <laughs> It's only because he's got big feet that you probably fall over him in the first place. Sure. <laughs> yeah. It, it's it's interesting when you think who lives here and on. Like Michael Dell lives here. No, it's not interesting years. to think at all. Why is yeah, it interesting yeah. to know who your neighbors are? Why are because we who, I have to stalk somebody when I'm not doing the show. Can you go around to Sandra's and say, I'm I'm just short of sugar. Have you got any? Can, can I do I, every day. And her security people go, we've we've had this discussion. Right. And here's the, the restraining order. And, and I have yeah. to leave. And it's all thing. And it's we can go around yeah. and say, look, look, Sandra, I've brought you. I want to bring, give you something hot on the kitchen table. I brought some food for you. You know, you could do that. <laughs> And you wonder, and this is, and you, and you wonder why we have the problems we have on our show. You know, so, I, think, I think, I think David peaked, and that, yeah, that he did. And now it's, <laughs> he's, he's, yeah, he's, now it's, he's got, he hit the top no of the mountain, lit, and David. now no it's just quit. a steady, it's, it's a steady it's all, fall. It's all uphill from here. No, <laughs> it's a steady fall now from Grace. He, did, he got three good zingers in, and he got a couple good zingers in on the earlier show, and now it's like he's just sort of like done. He He's driving the company on the one part, I'm, and his, his I'm, confidence I'm built up, and then he died. Yeah, yeah. Right. he crashed think, the car. Think, and died. Think, welcome, welcome, to a, welcome to my world. Welcome to my world. I'm just. It's when you when you mention uh, that particular gentleman that you know smells all musty. Uh, I, I saw an interview with I saw with him the other day, and they asked him how many kids do you have, and he said I've got twelve. So I don't mm -hmm. know if he's collecting them. I think they're clones. I think they're clones. They're clones. Yeah, they're not real children. Competition. They're not real children. I did see a scary thought. Lots of little muskers running around. Oh dear. Oh my god. I did see something going back to almost a serious topic about cruise lines the other day. A cruise ship couldn't make a port, and they were going to go to a different port because they had engine problems. And the sherry instead. And the crew, not the crew, but the passengers, when they were telling this in the big gathering hall, were saying, "We want a refund." And I was like, whoa, that is like, that's like unheard of. I was on, I've been on a couple of cruises, right? And back in the day before the ships got to the point where they're, you know, a floating island. And it was like, if it didn't happen, they took you somewhere else. You're like, yeah, it's fine. It was fun to get out and do. But we're in such a society today that we think we're so entitled. Listen, the ship's having a problem. It can't get to island A. It's going to go to island B. And they're like, we want a refund. I'm like, wow, that's like... Yeah. I'm assuming they're going to sue them. And what well, it's, it's isn't, isn't, there's, isn't a, there's a huge ship still stuck in in the docks at Belfast. It's been there for three months. It's supposed to be on a world cruise. Yeah. And it's, just, oh, wow. and it's still it's still it's still in Belfast. It's been there for three but months. Is it, so. is it to do with the fact that the we, engine problems? We, we've so, just, you know, some people have gone ahead. We've just we've just lost the wonder and appreciation of these things. So like yes. you know when 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 the Titanic came out, people went to yeah. see it because they were yeah. like, oh my god, look at this thing, you know. And now you get these ships that are five times the size, and we're like, yeah, whatever, you know. Yeah. I want my money back, you know. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Kid, we, we, I'd still look up at airplanes and go, oh my, how is that thing up there? And then when we had Concorde, we we're like, oh my god, yeah, like space, the final frontier is it's above me. What is this, you know? And I think now we become we have cars that can drive themselves. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, you know, that would have been mind blowing just a few years ago, and now people are like, oh, whatever, you know, oh, it doesn't work. Well, I'm going to get back to you know, we're, we're, we're all we're all about the same age, except for Vicky, because Vicky's just a twenty year old virgin uh, in her mind. Anyway, um, but Vicky, <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not just not just in her mind, not just in oh, her mind. That's right, in the boys that she goes after at the high school. Yes. <laughs> anyway, um, but if you think about it, when we were growing up, not Vicky, because she's too young. Um, but when the three of us were growing up, if you remember, like when they would launch the, you know, when they launched the, the first capsule to the moon, and then they yeah. would have these, like the first two or three launches, everybody watched. And after that, it was like, yeah, nobody cares. Then they well, it didn't Skynet. go. They didn't go, did they? Because they filmed it all in Arizona. Right, well, however, however it worked. And then they had <laughs> Skylab. Everybody watched that, and that was fine. And then the first time they did the space shuttle, everybody watched the first space shuttle. And then after that, nobody cared. And when like when the space shuttle blew up twice, yeah. nobody cared. 
It's like, oh, okay, well, pull up. We're really well, sorry. Well, they did. Well, oh, I don't know about that. that. They no, 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 no. It wasn't. I think, it I wasn't. Think we, did, we, we did become aware of them again when they started blowing up. I think that right. became. Yeah, like, I think so. But, 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 when they, yeah. but after the first couple of space shuttle flights, we were like, eh, nobody yeah, cares. Yeah. Shuttles, they go up, they come back. So what? You know. And, but and if you think, as a kid, space shuttle, I mean, the, the whole yeah. concept of this craft that can leave the planet, go up, and then come back again. Right. I mean, you know, it really, like, you just think that's 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 my dream come yeah. true. Yeah. But yeah, we we were so on, on a really ser- on a really serious serious note though. Just like, when they were testing, oh, was it is it Musk, isn't it? Who's who got the one that goes up and comes back down again? Yeah, the spaceship. I mean, they both I, do. I was sitting with people watching that, and they go, "Well, so what?" You know. Yeah. I said, well, "So what?" I mean, it's just yeah. such well, a feat of engineering to you know to shoot something in the air. So it's like fireworks. So they all come back down again and go, in, go into the yeah. same package you took it out of in the first place. Right. Oh, no, right. don't be ridiculous. I said, well, yeah, but that's Unless you're ridiculous. Boeing. Unless you're Boeing, it just goes up and nothing else happens. <laughs> it's just Boeing. It's like, you know. Yeah. But, no, but if you think about it, though, even Musk's thing, like everybody, the first time he launched a successful one and it went up and came down, and it's like, oh, that's it was very cool. Now nobody cares. And even to these astronauts that are stuck in space, like lost in space, like the show when we were all kids, right? Not that they're lost, but now they're stuck in space. Boeing can't do squat. So it's either Musk or Bezos company that's going to, I guess, go up there. But it's not on television, like when the astronauts in Apollo, whatever, like with them, were stuck in the capsule and the world watched and was captivated for those three days. Like, are they going to make it? Or are they not? I mean, like, no one that's all everyone talked about for three or four days. There's two astronauts, if you will, stuck in, in, a, in you know, however many miles above us in space. And we are saying we think we're going to get them out with this idea. And we well, think we, well, we, well, we spent the first half of the show, you know, wondering whether or not they were going to mate. I mean, that's right. <laughs> there you go. So we're interested. Oh, yeah, well, let's get priorities I'm right. Sure you we're taking this. You know, I mean, what else would you do? If you're locked in, if you're locked in a room. You know, it's, 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 a, it's this woman, there's a guy called Butch, you know, two plus two. It's, it's going to be it's going to be space babies, isn't it? What if it was Buzz? What, would that make any difference? Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Audrey. Yeah, yeah well, no, Buzz, well, to, Buzz to, to, infinity, oh, to infinity and beyond. Well, if she was called Buzz, so like Butch and Buzz, you mean, or Buzz Butch. No, if his name was Buzz instead of Butch. Would that, that may I tell you, Buzz, Buzz? Aldrin. Is the one of the ast- he's the only astronaut alive from that original mission. He's like ninety mm-hmm. something years old. I Does see he live around the, the corner from you as well, Stephen. No, he, <laughs> does, he lives in Arizona actually. Um, oh, okay. But he is one of those gentlemen that I would love to have an interview with. Not to say yeah. did you really go or you didn't go, because yeah. whether you did or didn't isn't material to me. What's material to me is the technology I, 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 and what I, you did. You know, to me, it's like I, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'll tell you in Dubai. Yeah. I had a teacher uh, kicked out of school because one day my kid came home and from the science class and yeah. he said, yeah, we were in science class and the teacher was telling us about space. And he said, oh, by the way, of course, none of that actually happened. And I said, what? I said, what? I said, yeah, yeah. the science teacher told you yeah. this. <laughs> right, right. The science teacher, the guy that's supposed to inspire you into right. the science and technology and advancement just told you after all of that, oh, by the way, of course, none of that happened. Right. I was livid. I was genuinely livid and furious, and I had a meeting with the headmaster. And sure enough, by the end of the month, that teacher was was flown back to the UK. Believe it or not, that's where yeah, he yeah. was from. Um, but I, I was like, no. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, this is something that humans have done. You yeah. know, they have done this. This is extraordinary. And for us to just blase, be blase about it, and to sit here and yeah. just deny it, and to say, oh, it was a sound set or a studio, or whatever. Maybe they did the footage there. I don't know. I mean, right, you know, maybe right. you can get a clear image up there, and they thought, well, we'll just film it. We're back when we're on Earth. So, okay, fine. Right. <laughs> did it, we lost right. the film. Let's yeah. recreate it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the funny part about the whole thing, the first mission to the moon, and I read a whole book on it by like PhDs and astronauts and people from NASA, like a real book. It wasn't like you know the four of us wrote it. And what was interesting is, is that guy said, I know you're not that your books aren't great, but this was like you know about the real real space travel, and the guys were like. <laughs> When you go to NASA now and you go, do you have the original notes or the original calculations? And they don't have it. They lost it. And I'm thinking to myself, let me get this straight. One of the greatest achievements of this known man, not like what happened 10 million years ago where they were flying around and doing all this stuff anyway with free energy, but the known man today takes takes a metal tube the size of a VW, goes 
however many million miles away or hundred thousand miles away lands with a, on the, with a computer the, the same size as a calculator right it right. goes goes lands on lands on the the, the the cheese meets the aliens slaps some high fives plants an american flag shoots a golf shot and then oh. comes home you right. do not remember the codes the paperwork i would think i would have put that in a fireproof safe yeah. room and I'd be framing it for posterity because everybody and their grandmother is going to want to see this. Like Leonardo da Vinci, right? His book that Gates bought for $25 million with all his sketch. If you can keep a book from the 14th century, from the 14th century, like where they didn't keep records and he wrote one book, you can keep that book, but you can't keep the most technologically advanced stuff for our generation because what? The, the, uh, the janitor threw it out? Come on, that's I have a problem with that. I'm not saying we didn't go. I'm just saying I have a problem with that. Like that, you got to be kidding me. Here's a, here's a thought. What, what, how much is how much is that flag worth? Which like, one? You can get it. Well, no, 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 no. How much is the flag worth? How much is that moon buggy worth that's still up there? Oh yeah, that's oh, beautiful. Yeah. Get that down to a concourse, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone would I buy mean, that thing for like a hundred yeah. million. Are you kidding? No, 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 then they wouldn't that, think they wouldn't think that you, it was the right classic one. Classic cars, that would be that, wouldn't it? Then classic cars. Well, no, now they want to mine astronaut asteroids and all that at meteors. I think that's all great, but I still go. So, how did you do it? Like, explain it. Like, why isn't what? Seriously, the notes aren't top secret. That's, they didn't do it. That's why they couldn't. Explain well, maybe. It. Sure. I think they. I still, in my in my mind, I think they did. Even though I've seen pictures of what the moon looks like from uh, India and China. And even Dubai's rovers that are on the moon, you see what the moon looks like because they're not uh, photoshopping it like you know, Mars. What we did now, we're not photoshopping Mars because people are like Mars looks like Arizona, not the crap they were giving us. So when you see the real pictures, well, you're like, Jordan. oh, Mars is, Mars is Jordan. That's that's Jordan is Mars. That's yeah, what but I'm just but I'm just saying though, when you look at Mars now, that's not photoshopped, or the moon that's not photoshopped. It's like, oh, that's really cool. And then what they do is then they show like the, the first moon landing and they're like really and you're looking at it and you go huh they make a good point it's like one of those things where you're sort of like yeah. it doesn't That's look like the same moon yeah. so <laughs> well you know but to me it's like exactly. day, what we gotta remember is that there was a space race going on at the time yes and i think that right. if one person had cheated i think the other person would have shouted about it you know so i agree it, so I, I agree. So, I, so i have to say that i think that it did, it did definitely i think happen. they went yeah. I, I mean how but they did this people incredible. are measuring that success here yeah, the imagery and and everything by by today's today. Today. yeah. So you know, yeah. And you, I mean, and you know what? Maybe and you know what? Maybe they did film some of it afterwards. You know, I mean, I, you know, I wouldn't put it past them. You know, at the end of the day, this is Hollywood, right? You've got you've got to make it look good. It's not just about going there, but it's about letting everybody know that you went there. And, if, right. and well, if I think the most important thing well, was is it not was again. to put that was to put that one particular American flag down. That seemed to be the most important. Yeah, because we're trying to colonize that now. Yeah. Here's what's also interesting. There's a movie it with belong, no, it doesn't belong to any the moon. I think there is actually an international treaty. The moon it, doesn't nothing belong belongs to anybody. Yeah. It's all it's all this thing. Yeah. Yeah. But you can free buy free. you can buy planets though. There's a there's a company that has apparently that you can buy planets, which is very interesting. But do, I but how do the aliens on the planet know this? <laughs> apparently not. It's just like the, it's just like the American Indians. We just buy it and show up, and you're like, yeah, it's ours. You can go. Um, but there may be a little. I don't, I, think, I, I don't think the Vulcans will be much pleased when you turn up and say, "I'm right? you. <laughs> right? But it's two hundred fifty thousand dollars to buy Pluto, and I was like, "Ooh!" And I said, and I talked to, I literally talked to our attorney. That's not a lot of money, said, though. And I said, I said. Could we buy Pluto? And I said, check it out. And they're like, so it's like 50-50 if it's really going to hold up. And like for 250, I don't do 50-50. It's either we own it or we don't. But I thought it was fascinating that people look at it in that respect. And I was like, okay, it's interesting. But I just would like when next time someone goes to the moon or goes to Mars, you know, you got the face of Mars. Let's like fly over to the face of Mars and look at it one more time. I would really like when one of these rovers from India, Dubai, China, whoever's there, just take your little rover and can you just go to where our American flag is or can you go to where they, they left the capsule just so we can get all this ridiculous crap done with I like think it's there wasn't there i think wasn't there something somebody had had seen the 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 flag is there or there was i'm pretty sure there was something maybe i i haven't read anything yeah. on it and because once again, it's a strange nobody thing cares. because they can they can put up a satellite here with a right. camera that will, that will show you close mm, space on yeah. a close line mm. you know with, with such precision and all and we can't find the the flag 
Right. So, well, I also get, I'm also fascinated that there's the dark side of the moon where yeah. they lose, they lose for 40 minutes, you'll lose communications. And I know the conspiracy theories are like, that's where all the alien bases are. And that's where the crashed ships are. And that's what John Lear would say. And all these other people. And that may be true. I, I haven't been there. I don't know, but I'm fascinated that to David's point with all our technology, like this, mm-hmm. you can go any. I can go to the deepest, darkest anywhere on the planet, jungle, Amazon river, you name, I can be in the middle of nowhere, Dubai. And I will get cellular. If whether that or with a satellite phone, I can pick up me and my camel can listen to Bob Denver <laughs> sing Rocky Mountain Highs without a problem. But if, meanwhile, on the dark side of the moon, nothing. So I'm like, seriously? Like we have all this technology and we can't do one thing. So I'm That's always That's how you visit people that. want it. That's, That's true. true. But, the, but, but the, good, the good thing now is, of course, if you go to Mars, you can buy Pringles because Mars is taking over Pringles. So that's, that's always a good thing. No, David, that's a, that's a, that's a different Mars, David. Oh, right. Not Mars. Uh, you guys, he really needs to refresh his meds now. I think that's yeah, right. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I think it's time. And you listen, for you, you only get this once a month. I get it five days a week. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> your choice. You're, 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 all, you're, all, you're all much too funny. I try to be serious oh, on these. Oh, I try to be serious oh. on these shows. Right. This straight man. Yeah, well, I, 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 I try to be. I try to be. I try to be serious, and you know, and I'm just ridiculed. <laughs> Wait, perhaps perhaps oh, we no. should go on vacation, David. Perhaps you, you should take a two. What? Thank you, Ricky. That's a good idea. Yes. They watch you on holiday for a fortnight. Was it, uh, was it Boney M? No. Yeah, it was Boney M. One way ticket to the moon, right? Isn't that Boney yeah. M? Yeah, there yeah. you go. You need yeah. a one way ticket and to the moon. That wasn't, and they were really back Because Boeing won't fly you back. So it's a one way ticket yeah. to the moon. That's right. And, and, <laughs> and Boney M were not real either. They're all made up. They never, they never sang the songs. They never wrote they were, the they, songs. They were, they were AI before there was AI. How yeah. extraordinary there you go. They were, they, they, right, yeah, yeah. They were well, gentlemen and ladies, nothing, nothing is real now anymore. This is the problem, isn't it? We it's not, we're not. Even, this is all a generated. We're just AI yeah, generated right. now. We're not real. There you go. Well, the good thing is, is well, next month. Talking about wonders of the world that yeah. we are so blasé yeah. about. I mean, the, recently I saw this video of this robot called Neo, the house robot. Have you seen this thing? Yeah, it's no. the, yeah. with the female it's face. A bag. Yeah, yeah. It's got blank yeah, face. Yeah. Bag, yep. hands it to the owner, takes a takes yep. a selfie with it, you know, and it's yep. and, and this is this is now happening. House wrote, and they say they're going to be putting those out for production by the beginning of next year. You know, I mean, yeah, and they, they're talking me. about the price of like a like a like an EV car, so maybe like fifty, sixty thousand dollars or something like that. To have made by Tesla, I take it. It's a what's it do outfit. for me though? What's my what's my what's my little robot do for it, me? It, other it, than it, give it me a bank. your bank account, your bank account, Stephen. That's what <laughs> other than that, what's it do for me? Yeah. No, see, like what you do. Mean, the, one, the one in the film was like I don't know. He was he was doing the laundry. He was picking up really? bags. He was like yeah. doing wow. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. got really fine motor everything. skills, and the and the yeah. face is scarily human looking. Like yeah. it's just the face. The rest of it's still robot-y. But they, like they, the they put him in a suit. They put him in yeah. a suit. Robot-y. Instead of robot-y. Yeah, but but they, they make the they, they said they, made, they had to make it lightweight because yeah. so it's, he's not like super powerful. So they have right, to make right. it lightweight because they have to hide some of the mechanisms and make sure that it's rechargeable. Right. But they have to make it compact because it can work in the home environment. And also he's, right. he's bipedal, so he walks yeah. like, a, like a normal person so that he can do stairs and stuff like that. But they say that these, these are going to be available at the beginning of next year. Well, probably plug him in once a day or something. I don't know. But does he plug himself <laughs> does he plug in? Himself in? Yes. I'm good with that. Does he plug himself in? Does he know to go to his station if he's running low? Or does he go, hey, idiot, I'm running low, charge me? It's, it's like he's Big Hero like He just walks into his own charger. Does yeah, it's a bit like a board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a, bit, or a bit like naughty, 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 uh, naughty, naughty yeah. toddlers who go, go walk them, go themselves into out. the hallway and sit and have to have yeah. time out. I, no, right. I'm thinking just for cigar lounges, that would be awesome. Could you imagine you have your robot sommelier go get you your cigar, cut robot it, light butler. it, and give it to you? Yeah, that's, it, that's awesome. That's well, we consider our butlers here robots. I mean, because, you know, and the beings continue until their attitude changes. But anyway, um, we're okay with that. So I'll stop it. We beat them regardless. Um, it's <laughs> discipline. So with a robot butler, that would be great because then when the humans get tired, the robot steps in. Yeah. We cut their pay. Well, like you, won't, you won't need any space babies if you've got robots. You won't need any space babies. Hey. No, you don't. I'm still fascinated with the space baby thing. I seriously want to know how that's going to work. 
I mean, the yeah, thing is, how wrong did you get next month to find out about that? You, you, well, you remember, the robot in lost in space. you remember the robot yeah. in lost in space? Yeah. I mean, like, look at that big bulky thing with the, with yeah. the wheel. Look, we've already got better than that now. We've got yeah. better than that now. This is incredible. It's absolutely extraordinary. I can't yeah, wait. He was made out of a dustbin, wasn't he? You know what I mean? With a couple least, of, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a gold I'm looking forward to seeing. Yeah, the goal. For, I'm looking forward to seeing really the next 10 years between AI, robotics, and everything. Yeah. I think going into 2030, it's going to be, a, it's going to literally be like if the if the world doesn't kill itself and, you know, we at the Illuminati and lizard people let you, um, I think it's going to be like the Jetsons. And I think that will be awesome. Yeah. Unless we yeah. decide to just wipe you all out. And I'm okay with that too. <laughs> yeah, we could, we could all just implode and just end it all. And, you know, the way things are going, hey, you know, it could be the better option. It's 50 yeah. 50. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll let you know. I'll let you know next week. Yeah. So there you go. Sure, right. It's always good to see you, my friend. You're it's always a blast. And, and I love it. And we were saying this before we came on the show, before you got on. We were just like, we have no idea what we're going to talk about, but it always ends up to be an hour of something good. And this was an hour of something good between the Formula One, the space babies, Boeing's one way ticket um and just all of it is just always a pleasure to see i think the and, graphic i can't wait to see the thumbnail graphic for this a space a robot space baby in a yep. formula one car i'm yeah. that is literally what i'm going to ask for <laughs> from ChatGPT. i'm assuming it's going to oh. tell me you can do none of it so we'll see how it works out um so it'll be kind David's of fun. Doing it now. Well, out of a job space baby will be funded by butch so there you yeah. go. So <laughs> and by the way butch <laughs> and whoever your whoever your friends are in the space station um we, have a we good time get, I'm Shout yeah out. have a good time yeah. enjoy enjoy the show and if you're going to make a space baby you can do it live on our channel <laughs> no please don't no no vicky i'm trying to help you out here so <laughs> no it's like i don't need that much help everybody okay. thank you don't forget to subscribe and like brown car guy will be back on sermon on the german next month here on our channel um god knows what we're going to talk about vicky's going to be in korea um, with her new husband that she doesn't know she has yet. So that'll be a fun show. And David, God knows what's going to happen with David. He's going on a holiday for a fortnight. Canary Island, baby. And there you go. He's getting more so, meds. Uh, That's yeah. what he needs. <laughs> 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 the nurse will be there shortly. Uh, what can I say? There you go. David, take us home, my friend. Don't forget to subscribe oh, okay. and like. Everybody. She's out. Stay with us until after the credits for the housekeeping, yeah? Cheers, Bye, everybody. everyone.